Well, let's just have a think about this for a second. Uh, if I were to be transformed into anything at all, would I want to be transformed into a pre-Raphaelite princess in a woodland? No, but I can see that, 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 that I can see that I can see the appeal. I mean, I have clients who want to be mermaids oh, and they do that and, un, and unicorns yes, and they things. Do that too, I'm sure. You know, I really wanted to go and get it done. You you want to be a pre-Raphaelite princess, do you? Probably pre-Raphaelite princess. <laughs> oh, thank heavens you used that adjective and didn't force me to. Because <laughs> they were rather waif-like, Nicola. Welcome to Own It, your business and your life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Morning, morning. Morning, how are you? I'm very, very well indeed, if a little bit frantic. (laughs) It's been one of those mornings we get up and you know. Oh, I, I, I've got a rather busy day myself today, so let's crack on. <laughs> Why not? So, what's your week been like? Well, uh, the first two things I'm going to tell you are apparently contradictory. The first one in you know your week, and the second one in what's fueled your fire. Um, your sister and I are in uh, uh, enrolled in this little Facebook ads learn along, which is four days, but it's a five day challenge, uh, disguised as a four day learn along. So, uh, and today is the fourth day, so presumably there'll be some upsell at the end of it, about which I know nothing as yet. It comes in, you won't be surprised to hear, the most impossible format for me to learn anything, which is a daily video in a Facebook group, just a talking head, where I get the choice to look up her nose or into her mouth, which is truly awful for me, until I worked out, of course, I don't have to watch the pictures, I can just listen to the audio. So, the audio is good. Yeah, the audio is good. Uh, it's not so much slowly. It's just I don't want to watch people while they're talking. It's quite a. It's like watching people while they're eating. It's really mostly unpleasant for me, to be honest. Anyway, uh, I'm not sure why I didn't remember until day two or four that I could just, uh, not, you know, just just make the screen go away. I didn't have to look at her, which is good. Um, and it, she's only teaching us general principles. Day one was attraction. Day two, connection, no like and trust, and that Facebook ads are just, in her opinion, just another marketing touch which may or may not result instantly in a sale but she's encouraging a small daily budget forever and yesterday was about audience testing so my week has been about that really well that's the exceptional item lots of lots more news to follow but uh, what about you well, I'm interested to hear Sarah's in it because she used to run my Facebook ad campaigns for me so what no well interesting well I mean the funny thing about Sarah is I said when she joined up I went oh, I like it when you and I are in something together. But she's been completely invisible in it for the four days. And so have I largely, to be fair. But normally, she's quite a rebel in a group that we yeah. study in together. She'll That's put like on, the fir- on, yeah. Yeah, on the on the Facebook page, one that we did together with Cassie in the summer, she, she basically said on day one, I'm sick to death of all social media, almost like a challenge to Cassie to... <laughs> This time she hasn't done anything at all or said anything at all. Uh, yesterday I nearly sent her a message saying, well, but uh, actually I was too busy, so I haven't done it, but there you yeah, go. Yeah, I think probably she probably listened to the first day and realised that she knew it all back in, inside out and back to front. Well, it is general principles. There's no how-to involved, and one of my clients is a bit, in, bit um, disappointed about that. But actually, what do you want for nothing? Well, also, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, it's very easy to learn the how-to. And it, and with Facebook ads, you have to know the general principles. So she's teaching the right thing. So that- well, absolutely. But in yeah. terms of using it from her perspective, which is she's going to upsell us to something later today, you start with the general principles, don't you? And then when one people want to do how-to, you sell it to them. I mean, it's yeah, just absolutely. so obvious, really. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. I've got some very big news. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for, no, not about the podcast, unfortunately. I okay. have had a short story accepted by your and my favourite author as, for inclusion in her next book, Daphne Capsali. Oh, how brilliant. I um, saw her appealing for that earlier in the week. I know, and I dashed off a couple of stories, and um, one of them was more suitable to the brief than the other. And she said, I said, it's a bit longer than you said. And she said, no, I'm going to take put it in just as it is. 
And she actually told me that the first story I submitted that wasn't quite on brief um, actually gave her goosebumps and made her cry. Oh, so good feedback from a writer to a, to a fledgling writer. Absolutely. I've been walking on cloud nine all week. Oh, and I went, bet you have. Yeah. I mean, you know, we yeah. both admire her enormously. So yeah. in fact, yeah. I was reading, I said to her, it was reading your 100 Days of Solitude that made me want to write. And you, and you can thank me for that. Yeah, I can. I'm totally thanking you. Yes. Thank you, yes. Judy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not required, but worth reminding. <laughs> And um, yeah, so, so that's brilliant. And then I went straight from getting that email to my Write Club meeting where we were t- discussing setting up a podcast for writers and readers. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Before we get into the podcast, can we just go back to Daphne's thing? It's a compendium or an anthology or something. What's the point of it? It's, it's uh, about how to get over a breakup. Ah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so she's written most of it, but she just she just needed the final, you know, push really, and she suddenly had the idea of inviting um, contributions. So yeah, okay, not, okay. it's it's all short stories and tips and things like that, and, and I've combined a story with a tip, so or okay, three okay. tips in fact. And mine's called. Let me just whet your appetite a little bit. A Game of Thrones saved my life. There you go. Now, now you intend that that would whet my appetite? Well, not yours specifically. No. No. Okay. Oh, good. Good. Perhaps because your audience you've missed your audience here obviously (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny anyway then i trotted off down to i didn't actually i got picked up because it was i mean i'm not joking this week there's been biblical epic thunderstorms it's been unbelievable and the rain when it comes down it's unbelievable so funny that you the um least religious and person i know would use the word biblical to describe rain well, it's, you know, it's like the 12 pestilences or whatever you call it. When it's, oh, look at you. It's all that research you're doing into religions, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yes. It's, not, it's, hmm. it's none of your little wishy-washy drizzle or mizzle or whatever. No, I, I quite understand. It's Noah and an ark. <laughs> yes, is. it is. And anyway, so I went off and, and obviously they were thrilled by news. So we had a glass of Prosecco each and uh, we talked about our new podcast, which is all going to be, in fact, we planned out the, the first 10 episodes because people come and go from here. So we need to make sure that we've got uh, some episodes in the bag. But um, yeah, so we, we've got, we're going to have lo- lots of lovely things, Judith. Anyone who loves to read will like it because we're going to do things like name that novel from the first line. And um, also we're going to have crimes against the English language and all sorts of fun things like that. And then we're also going to do little readings from whatever we're doing and, um, and talk about things like, you know, being a writer. I think, I think, you know, I think you'll enjoy this one. It's going to be great fun. And we're all such different characters as well. So it's going to be great. So okay. what else has happened? Anything in your week apart from that? Uh, not that I want to tell you in this section. Okay, well, let's move on then to what's fueled your fire. Okay, well, I'm, now I'm going to contradict myself, of course. In, uh, <laughs> only partly, but, you know, I have totally, totally, totally fallen in love with the Lumen 5 videos and I cannot stop myself making them. I've already made one this morning about my day. Have you seen that? Have you seen today's? No, No, I just dashed off one this morning about what I was going to do today because I'd got so many things. And I actually, I just bloody love them, Nicola. Well, also, they are a fantastic marketing tool as well, you know, because video is, especially when there's words coming across the screen and then fading out, it's very visually compelling. Well, it's interesting you should say that because although they're well watched, they can't, this is what, this is actually what I say in an article. Oh, no, it's what I say in tomorrow's newsletter. I'm going to say something a client would say to me now, okay? Mm-hmm. Although they are well watched, I can't see them at the moment doing me any good. Well, okay, so what, what you really need to do then is, because you're in this Facebook thing, is you need to create a custom audience out of the people who watch it through at least 50%, all of them. And as you make a new one and upload it, you add it into that custom audience. And then what you do, would do is advertise, your, um, advertise something that people can buy to that engaged audience. Okay. I've no idea how to do any of that, but I take your point. Yeah. Uh, now, so let me just tell you what I love about them. They're my words. They're my choice of music, my choice of images from their enormous library. And it's all free and it's fast and Facebook likes video and it can be native. And they're just fun. They're just fun, Nicola. And <laughs> it's free. There is a $49 a month paid version, but I can't see the benefits. It only offers you two things. One, it takes off the no, you know, the Lumen 5 advertising end frame. And it offers you a higher resolution. Why would I want a higher resolution of video? I don't know. 
No, quite. Oh, $49, $49 a month for no, that. It's not worth it, no. no, it's not worth it, is it? No, which is mm-hmm. a shame. So that's actually their business model's a tiny bit broken, isn't it? It is flawed, yeah, completely. I can't think I can't think of any reason you'd want a higher resolution. Most no, interestingly, um, our friend Veronica Pullen was obviously an early adopter of Lumen 5, and they gave her the paid version at a very small fee. I can't remember what she said, 29, 19, 19, something like that. And she said she really needed it in the beginning when Lumen 5 was invented because it used to take hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to render or download or or both whereas now they do take a little while but this morning I went off to make a cup of coffee while mine was rendering and downloading and they're so easy to edit as well so when you look at them you go "Mm, don't like the way that looks you just change the photo or the I mean you know you know me I've got the lowest boredom threshold well I was going to say in the world but perhaps second only to you and I can you know I'm not I'm not I'm not bored by it because it's so fast and, and also, it's it's amazing. It's an outlet for your creativity. And as you say, you're doing it for your stuff. So you're in, get, you're very engaged in it. Oh, as well. yeah. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. I'm going to find a way to... Ooh, we're going to find a way to make it work even better, actually. At the moment, I feel like a kid in a candy store. But I think I could probably make it work. Oh, Not I just, just, had, to, I just had an well. overwhelmingly good idea. Yeah, I know. Me too. Now, we'll discuss it afterwards, okay? But... but <laughs> But uh, uh, that's where I'm going next, obviously. I know exactly what you need to do with these videos. Don't tell me now, please. Just tell me about what's fueled your fire. (laughs) Well, what's fueled my fire is a mate of mine, Pete. Do do you you know Pete Pete Jenkins, entrepreneur in residence at Brighton University. Uh, What a a good job. Oh, Oh, gosh. Well, it's not even a job, Judith. He just rocks up every week to do a day's tuition. Um, Who do you have to to sleep with to get that? Because I wouldn't mind an entrepreneur in residence role somewhere. Is it just Brighton University? or does anybody else have entrepreneurs in residence? No, is the answer. But it, it, it made it made me go ooh when I heard that. He's oh. a really nice bloke. We were in um, a, a Worthing Chamber peer-to-peer mentoring group, and we were really pretty much the only two who hit it off. So, <laughs> and we were at the same levels. He he was just transitioning from a business that largely sold um, telephone systems and things. You know, they're out. It was going out of date fast. Put it that way. And, he, and is he is he the gamification man yes, now? He is the gamification. Yes, I thought he might be. Yes. And anyway, he. He, he's the one who Phoebe did a day in the life of and followed him around. Yes. Yeah. He goes and speaks in very, very gorgeous places like Kuala Lumpur. And he's actually in Istanbul today speaking at the Istanbul gamification thing. Can I just tell you that neither of those places are nice. They're, they're, they're exotic and interesting, but they're not very nice. No. But the other thing, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing a gamification event, Europe, gamification Europe conference in two weeks time. And he just popped up on my Facebook and said, any chance you could help me fill, fill the last few seats, you know, the last 30 seats. And he gave me a really good budget, and um, I, you know, it's a six, it's about six hundred quid for a ticket, I think. And all these people get it's being paid for by people's companies, so it's an easy sell. And I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, I've just I woke up this morning. I just set it up yesterday afternoon with. He, I got him to do a Facebook live from Istanbul, and then I promoted the Facebook live to all different kinds of in- interest groups, and then I set up an audience of the people who watched it through at least fifty percent, and then I I'm now advertising to those people, and it's so I forgot how creative Facebook ad management can be when you've got a decent budget and you can do lots of different experiments, you know. And I just started enjoying it. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning and I thought, oh my God, he's in Istanbul. I could target people in Istanbul who've got all these interests. And every single person at that conference will see his ads. So it's like they could then come over to, to you know, the one, in Europe, the one in Brighton. So it was just exciting and it made my heart race again. And I just thought I really should be doing more of this. And so I'm seriously considering just opening up my Facebook ad management again to... Um, oh, that's interesting. People. Yeah. Okay. I might run some. Ad, I might run an ad today and see what. Happens. Well, I, I would quite like you to help me with my when it gets to my book, but we'll discuss that off podcast as well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But no, it was great because because there was a decent budget, because it was a decent topic, because he had all the. I mean, the only thing was he hasn't had any Facebook pixel on his new website, which is a bit heartbreaking. But luckily, there were enough people um, who had interacted with his page to give me a bit of a start. So can I just okay. appeal to anyone out here, even if you're not thinking of running Facebook ads in the next three months or six months, just make sure you've got the Facebook pixel on your website because it will be tracking. You can track for 180 days people who visited your website and it really helps when you come to want to advertise something to have. And how do you, I have a Facebook pixel. How do you put it on your website? You just go to your theme and put it in wherever you would put your Google Analytics. 
code. So it's really easy and it's a, a five minute job for your developer. If you've got a developer, they shouldn't even charge you to do it because it's so quick. Okay. And, um, and as long as your pixels on there, it'll be recording all the visitors to your website. And then when you do want to advertise your ad, Facebook ads person can come along and they can target people who visited the website. Generally, they can target people who visited specific blog posts. They can target people who they can make a lookalike audience of the people who visited your website. So you've suddenly got half a million relevant people to advertise to. It's just jaw dropping. But, and I just, I just texted him and I said, when you get off that, because he's a keynote speaker, so you're speaking this morning. I said, when you get off that stage, and I mean immediately you get off that stage, get that Facebook pixel on your website because everyone in the audience is going to be looking you up on Google. Yeah. And visiting your website. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you, um, there is one only ever has, I think I'm correct in saying, one Facebook pixel. Is correct. that right? Yes. Yes. And you can use it on different websites. That people yes, yes. Use. No, I knew that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's what fueled my fire. And um, here we are, ready to go into focus of the week. Yes, before we do that, let me ask one clarifying question about what you've just said. Um, His Europe gamification conference, is he doing that at Brighton Uni? No, he's doing it at the the Metropole in Brighton. Oh, right, okay, the one that they blew up. Yeah, Phoebe's going to, no, that was grand. Ah, He's going to, uh, Phoebe's going to be filming there. She's, she, he's, he's employed her to be his social media roving reporter doing Facebook okay. lives and interviews and things like that, which is great. Okay, very good. So that was nice. So that, by doing his little um, entrepreneur, you know, following him around for a day and making him a little branding video, and she didn't get paid for that because I asked him if he would do it to get her portfolio up, she's now got paid work out of it because she did such a nice job. So, Well, you see, there you go. Yeah. I think I wrote a blog post or republished an old blog post this week on that very topic, which is why yeah. would you, you know, keep showing up and doing things for nothing and going to networking and hoping and blah, 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 because actually it does turn into something. It does. And, and, and Pete now is completely comfortable recommending her because he's actually worked with her and he knows, you know, she might be young, but she's professional. And um, yes, so, you know, it, it's all about referrals, isn't it? Can be. It can be indeed. She's um, just on a, on that topic. I know it's off topic a bit, but she's got a new video coming where she went behind the scenes of a photo shoot where they turn you into a pre-Raphaelite princess. So you can go and have the, it's, a, it's a, a treat for a day. You go and there's a photographer, there's a makeup artist, there's a stylist, and you go to some exotic location. And you know the pre-Raphaelites were very romantic looking. All the, the well, the only only pre-Raphaelite princess I can think of is the is the is the piece of art where she's drowning a in theme. a pool. A yes, theme. and you've got to ha- you've got to have long auburn ringlets for it. Well, they you? bring the wigs and everything, so okay. you are transformed into a pre-Raphaelite um, creature in a woodland somewhere, and it's stunning. You wait till you see the video, Judith. It's absolutely stunning. So that's what um, I'm looking forward to. That one dropping, as they say. Well, let's just have a think about this for a second. Uh, if I were to be transformed into anything at all, would I want to be transformed into a pre-Raphaelite princess in a woodland? No, but I can see that, that, <laughs> that, that, that I can see that I can see the appeal. I mean, I have clients who want to be mermaids oh, and they do that and, un, and unicorns yes, and they things. Do that too, I'm sure. This is sort of magical, whatever you call it, isn't it? It's, it's a, I think, uh, um, yeah, I think, she, I think the, well, you'll see when you see the video, it's absolutely stunning. I'll put it on my, my Facebook profile and everyone can see it because okay. it's just, you know, I really wanted to go and get it done. You, you want to be a pre-Raphaelite princess, do you? Probably pre-Raphaelite princess. Oh, thank heavens you used that adjective and didn't force me to. Because <laughs> they were rather waif-like, Nicola. I know that, but, but you know, good, good camera. But a girl, can, a girl can dream. <laughs> oh, dear. I can't Have you that. lost it? Yeah. No, you've lost, yeah, have you lost it? Yeah. <laughs> Call me back by telling me about the focus of the week. Here at Own It, we personally believe that leaders are readers, but sometimes it's just not convenient to read and you'd rather listen instead. For listeners of Own It, the podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. A couple of titles we've picked out for you particularly are Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg or Crush It, Why Now is the Time to Cash In on Your Passion by Gary Vaynerchuk. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash own it. Again, that's audibletrial.com forward slash own it for your free audiobook. 
You can pick one of the ones I've chosen for you, or you can choose something else. Enjoy your listen. Dear listener, Nicola and I have had a little exchange of views this week about, vaguely on the topic of doing improving work, and it was about a book that I'd recommended to Nicola, which is quite testing because it runs to nearly a thousand pages, and it isn't a particularly easy read, and we both love page turners, uh, page turners, which the minute you, well, they're sort of, they're, they're addictive because you're, you're in the moment, you love them, you're gripped, you stay up late, you can't, you don't want them to end, but as soon as they end, you forget about them and you can't remember whether you've read that one and you move on to another one and you hope there are 22 in the series. But given that we're both writers and want to get better at writers at being writers now and again you have to read improving literature so Nicola sent me a message in the week saying I don't really like that book that you've given me to read it's a bit hard and I've said look you've got to apply yourself because you're a writer now and writers need to know what good literature is by reading it and so so the, the topic under demand is you know why would we persevere with a hard book in my private life in the olden days. Do you remember the invention of the video? It meant that you didn't have to watch something all the way through if you didn't like. There was a great sort of liberation when you learned about 35. Oh, I don't like this book. I'm not going to bother to finish it. I don't like this film. I'm not going to bother to finish it. It was very liberating. But I think the opposite is true. And a book club is quite helpful for this is because there's many a book that I've not spectacularly enjoyed reading, but obliged myself to finish for two reasons. One, the commitment to the project. And two, because when it stops, you just feel so proud of yourself that you've achieved something that's so much harder than that thing that you normally easily do and do it normally because it's easy, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I am a completer finisher. I've never, ever, I, I very rarely don't finish something I do, I'd start um, unless it's, you know, really impossible. I've never been one to stop reading a book if I don't enjoy it. I've always wanted to finish a book. But I, I dispute that good literature has to be dull and worthy. Oh, this isn't dull. It's not dull or worthy, this book. Well, it is. I'm finding it very dull. No, it's not. It's not dull or worthy. It certainly is not either of those things. Well, I'm finding it dull, so it's subjective, isn't it? <laughs> well, look, what's dull about it? Well, there's no bloody conversation. It's a stream of... Dis- ah, so, what, so you need conversation for a book to be interesting. That's yeah. a good qualifier. Well, you didn't tell me that before I recommended it, did you? Well, someone actually brought the physical copy of the book yesterday because we'd been talking about it. It's and a big thunker, isn't it? It is a big thunker. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad I didn't know that either when I started it. Um, I don't think I would be able to continue because I'm just not enjoying it enough, whereas... Daphne, I, it was a, a, a good read and it was beautifully written. You could feel... No, Daphne, which, which Daphne? 100 Days of Solitude. That was a, yeah, well, that, that, I wouldn't call that a hard book. No, it wasn't at all. It's, it was totally enjoyable and that, that proves my point. You no, know? no, no, it doesn't prove your point. I'm sorry. The point here is why would we do improving work? Daphne's book was an easy read. That's not improving. That's just a lovely piece of lovely piece of entertainment and enjoyment. It is, a, it is an improving because it was so beautifully written. I would dispute also something you said last week that the Case Garpetta novels are beautifully written. They're, they're not. They're readable. You know, Daphne's a good writer, but that's not, neither of them are writing, neither of those two genres are literary fiction. Well, I'm going to try Mrs. Delaware instead, (laughs) because I've heard that's a very, everyone quotes that as being a a well-written book. Okay. And I think I'm going to try that instead, because I really can't can't carry on with the other one. Well, let's make it broader than this, which is, uh, why would anyone ever do improving work? It's in order to get better at something to which you're... Yeah, and there's a sense of achievement and a sense that the quality of writing will ultimately improve my own. So, for instance, I have a client who uh, spends a lot of time listening to a guru and he is clearly channeling and she is zoning out because it's quite long, quite boring and quite tiring. But she trusts that the important stuff is going in yeah. and will th- therefore improve her life and change the way she thinks and feels and operates. And I think that's true. Well, I think it's true about almost everything we consume and therefore we have to be quite c- careful as consumers, not just readers, but that 
it's not just dross that we take on yeah. entertaining dross but that occasionally we volunteer for a stretch yeah and and you know i actually do feel that i've read over my 56 years sometimes four books a week i have read an awful lot of good stuff you know i worked my way through the entire children's library before i was about eight and i really feel i've read enough good writing to have that in in my bones and i downloaded grammarly this week because i was getting a little bit paranoid about my grammar and tenses and and points of view and things like that in my writing and actually grammarly is picking me up but not as much as i thought it would so oh, well, it, it mainly offers you commas doesn't it grammarly oh, yeah, I find. it's taking out commas, yes putting commas in <laughs> yes it is it takes them out where it doesn't want them and offers yes. us to put them in where and it does hyphenating yeah. all sorts of things that i never knew yes it does hyphenate things. things and of course remember we don't have to necessarily follow grammarly advice i don't know whether grammarly is an american thing and maybe the americans would hyphenate something we wouldn't and vice versa yeah but uh, i do feel i've read enough good books i'd like to read more classics now um i read you know i've read all of uh, the brontes and things like that i think i'd like to read some more classics the the right club ladies keep talking about books that i've never heard of so um things like the poisonwood tree and stuff like that the poisonwood um, bible that's the one yes yes yeah so, uh, you know, so I think I'm going to try some of those, but I'm, I'm not going to push myself to finish. I mean, my time is so short. You wouldn't believe how busy I am <laughs> for someone who lives alone in the middle of a, a remote village in Greece. I don't feel I have any time to myself. <laughs> Well, that was another thing you said, wasn't it? And I said, and I said, that's the joys of self-employment, isn't it? That we choose. I've got a busy day today, but off, off, other. I mean, often my day is, it's, it, well, every day is ordained, Monday to Friday, ordained by what it says in my diary. And as soon as I finished, it's like, oh, good, I can go and read something or, <laughs> uh, or watch something, you know. So my, I, I earn my entitlement to leisure consumption of the written word or the dramatic word. Yeah. Well, I think I'm counting the, you know, reading as, as, as a, a job to do, you know, rather than the other way. So the other way around, I'm not counting it as leisure. Or perhaps it's the oh, well, but, I, but I don't think it matters, actually. I mean, I think it is a job to do of a writer. Now, let me go to the Poisonwood Bible, if I may, which I found completely unreadable and didn't read or finish, despite the fact that one of my clients was so determined that I would that she gave me a copy more than once, I think, but I still didn't finish it. But Barbara Kingsolver, who wrote it, is one of my favourite writers, and she wrote one of my favourite books of all time, which is called Prodigal Summer, which I did love, and it's got a central contemporary heroine who lives in the woods and is a woodsman or a woodswoman or something like that and yes, oh, loved it loved it, loved it. Down, Judith. I'll, take yeah. another, I'll take another referral from you on the book it's a much shorter book and I read it in a book club but I loved it from I tell you what I loved about it and this is a, a is a a sign it grabbed me on page one well you've got to grab them on page one apparently you've got to grab them on page one <laughs> unlike Captain Corelli who took 150 pages to grab me Really, you forced yourself <laughs> through that one, did you? I love. Well, did you? I did yeah. force myself through that book. Yeah, oh, it's so funny. We must have very different taste in books. There you go. Yeah, there must be a lot of conversation in that. I didn't realise that that's <laughs> what you need. <laughs> well, I didn't think I needed it to be honest, and I certainly didn't put it in my, my writing. It was one of the things I was struggling with. But that, that's the other thing I'm struggling with is the whole um, "she said, he said." Do you need to put that, or do you just put what they say and let the reader work it out for themselves who actually said it? Well, I notice that they don't, do they? Sometimes when you're reading a book, because they haven't said he said, she said, you have to go back and read it to work out who yeah. said what first so yeah. that you know who's stalking in that bit. I sometimes have to do that. But um, taking this broader than reading and writing for the moment, you know, what else do we do that's improving? I suppose my this four day learn along about Facebook ads is my improving this week I don't feel I want to learn something improving every week uh, I said about six right. weeks ago I was exhausted by new 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 but I do occasionally volunteer for a stretch that feels doable I wouldn't want to read hard books all the time and I wouldn't want to read the classics all the time either they have to be interspersed with something easier and yeah. and they need and, and, and the balance the counterbalance I think yeah, I do read. Um, I've read a lot of business tomes over the years. I know you have. You've read thousands of those. Yeah. That's your specialist subject, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is mm. because you get one. If you only get one thing out of a book and you, and you remember it, exactly what your client was saying, you do. You have to trust that you're going to take in the bits that are important, and you do. Yeah. Thomas, yeah. Thomas Lennon said that once as well when I went to Vegas, and he, I said, you know, how can I get the most out of this? He said, just relax and listen yes to that you'll know you you know that you'll take the bits you need and your brain I remember you saying that yeah. yeah that's a really good story and it takes us off performance 
uh, and allows us to just sort of soak up stuff easily. Yeah. And I listen to, you know, podcasts late at night, even though I often fall asleep and then have to, you know, do the second half the next night is it because I know that my brain is being improved by listening to that stuff. And the other thing I used to do was religiously was I'd listen to a f- it, it, it sometimes ran to four hours when, when I was a, a rich Sheffron student, he used to do a call in and because he, he had so many clients, um, you could call in and wait in, in the queue and he wouldn't get off the phone until he'd spoken to everyone. And I think listening to him from, I started listening to him religiously from 2010 when things all went tits up um, through to really, uh, whoa, it, was, it wasn't that long ago I stopped. Um, and I think that that definitely changed my thinking because I was almost, you know, I didn't even need to get my question answered. I could almost hear what Rich would say in my head because I'd heard him coach so many people. And it was quite that's, what, that's, that's exactly what I do in Small Business Big Magic. Anybody can listen either live or to the recording if they want to. And I always tell them in the group who called and what we discussed. And it's 90 minutes, but if I need to go on longer because somebody's come in late and we're in the middle of something, I will. And uh, quite a lot of them say things like, uh, what would Judith say? Uh, WWJS, we've had that before, haven't we? What would Judith say? Yeah. And I heard your voice in my head. It's nice that they can you know, have that conversation with me virtually and, you know, they don't need to call in necessarily. That's the whole ethos of my book, you know, learning to trust yourself more because we're all all right, really. (laughs) As long as we do a bit of stretching now and again. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I had to stretch myself to record my own V-zine, which is three days late today because I knew I wouldn't have any other time to do it and get it to Phoebe in time. So you, you do have to stretch yourself. You have to, you have to do the things that most people wouldn't do. I mean, most people wouldn't leap out of bed in the morning just because they had to add Istanbul to the list of places that someone's ads were showing. But I, well, I know that thing about leaping out of bed is good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Gets you up. <laughs> do you, uh, you listen to podcasts and you read books. Do you ever listen to Audible? I, I can't listen to, Fiction. I can only, I can't listen to anything during the day. Um, sometimes when I'm cooking, I listen to a podcast, but I, I can't listen to fiction because the person's voice annoys me. <laughs> yeah. It, it overshadows my imagination, someone's voice. And you've never yet got into Radio 4, have you, which is no. talk radio all day long. No, uh, I think you should. Long. I think you should because there's lots of stuff in there, which is, it, it's a full menu of, um, you know, and you don't have to listen to the bits you don't like. Uh, but, you know, there's gorgeous bits in there. But they do do a, a, a shortish play in the afternoon, which when my brother retired, he discovered he quite liked. And then they do a book at bedtime as well. Um, there's, there's just, you should flirt with it for a month, Nicola. Make it a stretch. January 2018, Please. experiment Please. with Radio 4. I'm a visual person. You're an auditory person. That's why I would have to sit. Yeah, but you listen to all these podcasts. I know, but only, only when I can't do anything else. I, I, I would have to watch that person teaching the Facebook ads. I would have to sit and watch her, her, her face moving while she's talking. I would have to oh, watch the video because... Gosh, that's many, absolute torture oh, that's why. No, I know, I know. That's because you're not visual. I'm visual. I need to be, I need to have my eyes engaged with something or I can't keep concentrating. I've got ADD, remember? So the minute I start listening to anything audio-wise, my brain goes off and on its own on a tangent and I can't concentrate because there's not enough to engage me visually. So I stop listening to what they're saying. I do believe that, that what you and I have both just said is also rubbish. And let me explain what I mean by that. The thing about I've got ADD and I'm an auditory person and you know, you've got ADD and I'm an auditory person and you know, it's just our preferred method. It doesn't, you know, I could change my mind that actually looking at her hair and her lipstick and her mouth and her teeth and her enthusiasm is is something I can bear. I could change my mind about that. It's not like, it's not a, it, we've got this, all of us do this. Yes, we've got a preferred method, but the other way isn't impossible. But also knowing these things about yourself makes it easier for you to set up an environment in which you can, you can perform better. Because... Well, you, I was going to say, despite being an ordinary person, I never, never listen to another podcast except ours. <laughs> But you listen to Radio 4, so what's the difference? Yes, I do. Well, because uh, it isn't so much the 
well, I, I don't listen to Radio 4 like Heather does. I don't have it on with the volume turned down. I know where the good programmes are. Um, the, the comedy news quiz on Fridays at half past six. The arts programme at 7.15. Uh, and uh, I have other friends who listen to it like Heather do, does. So they send me, you know, have you heard such and such? And I go, you know, become the BBC radio app. I go and listen to things that I know make my life better. Yeah. Apparently they've got I, don't listen to, I don't listen to Audible either, except a book mm. that I've committed to for a book club that I find completely unreadable. So I listen to it while I'm doing colouring or something. Yeah. Like, oh, right, good one. J- Justin Brooke, you know, we interviewed him and Shona. Yes, for, for yes. The summit. He recently announced that he buys three copies of every book, he, which drives Shona mad, apparently. He buys the Audible version. He buys the, um, the book from Amazon, and he buys, and apparently, um, the Kindle version. And he also buys a hard copy and a Kindle. So he can actually listen in the car and then move straight to his Kindle, yeah, which is yeah. his main sort of thing. Synced. Yeah, and they're synced. Yeah, yeah that's and then right. He, he loves to have the hard copy of the book so that if he really enjoys listening to it and reading it, he can then go back and make notes or he could take it on holiday because his idea of going on holiday is not to take his Kindle because that reminds him of work. He likes to have a, a physical book to read. And I'm, I'm exactly the same. I, I, I love to have a physical book to read. And if I was going on holiday, I'd want proper books, not a Kindle. Well, I have no need for a proper book ever again. My Kindle and I are totally in love with one another. And um, I, but, but you've just given me a good idea for my, uh, my book, which is that I want to create a bundle so people can have all three if they want. Oh, definitely, yes, because people will buy them. And, and he says, you know, if he's in, the, in a queue somewhere waiting for one of the kids, he can read his Kindle. If he's in the car, he can listen to the book. And then, and then if he's at home relaxing away from the computer, he's got the physical copy. Oh, well, if he's or, got the Kindle yeah. app on his phone, he could, um, he could read it on there, although he's getting on a bit, so he probably can't see it <laughs> justin brooke you're getting on a bit <laughs> well i mean you know what i'm saying when you there are people you get a certain stage where you don't want to read a book on your iphone don't oh, you and he's, yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's just one more screen to stare at as far as i'm concerned that's why i like yes. this book I like to get yes. away and go down the cafe well interestingly my kindle isn't like a screen because it's one of those original ones that reads like a book oh see now i couldn't do, i couldn't be doing with that because it was so oh, it was so love busy. it oh so readable it's have just you got like paper. paper white paper white no i haven't no I've got the, the, the 2009 version. I love it. See, I, I, Not only that, but I've got a special bag to put it in when I'm sitting in the swimming pool. <laughs> I, um, I took one look at that and thought, no, that would depress me looking at that all day. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely love it. And, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I like reading on my iPad on the app, as well, Kindle app, um, but my preferred is me and my Kindle. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? There we go. Mm. Moving on, what was the focus all about then? About improving. It's about it's about why we might choose to do improving work, whether it's reading literature or uh, going on a Facebook ads course or something that feels hard. Yeah. For the sense of achievement and well, uh, because, and, and the trust that it goes in. That was the very much so, but I wanted to pick you up on that sense of achievement. I don't feel the need to get my sense of achievement from reading a book. I get a sense of achievement every single day from my work. So I don't need a book that makes me feel like I have to work at it. I get a sense of achievement every day from my work as well, but the achievement that I get from reading a hard book is completely different. Well, I'm going to leave that one with you. You're welcome to it. <laughs> okay. What's your word of the week then? Well, uh, continuing on the same theme, my word is myriad. Oh, go on then. Did you know that there are two ways to use the word myriad? You can say there are myriad ways to do something, or you can say there's a myriad of ways. And I prefer the first because I think the second is clunky, but both are legit. Well, uh, extra words in the second one that aren't necessary. Well, exactly, exactly. But everybody does it. Everybody. Now, you'll notice now, every time you see the word myriad, somebody's got, you know, a myriad of, you know, a word before it and a word after it, which you don't need. You just need myriad ways. I think that could be one a word we could use in our crimes against the, uh, the English language because... A lot well, it isn't a crime, mean, Nicola. It's not a crime because it's legit. But myriad is a beautiful word. And why clutter it up? Yeah, absolutely. Mine is donuts. 
Oh, lovely. <laughs> Here's the thing. Right? And, how, and how are you spelling that? Because uh, I'm, I'm just about to write D-O-U-G-H, but, but people these days yes. spell it D-O-N-U-T, don't they? It's the American way. I've spelt it the English mm. way because I okay. don't want to commit a cr- crime against the English language. Um, okay. we've, got, we've got an American in our group, so it's going to be quite entertaining with her. Um, I, I heard a fantastic thing. Steve um, Bartlett of Social Chain was explaining the thing about how – you need to do little things every day that build up to a massive difference, you know, over a period of time. And he explained it so well, because I'm always trying to talk to my clients about this. You know, if you do, it's no good just putting out one bit of social media content and expecting it to change the world. Um, there, you've, and, and it's never one big thing that makes a difference. It's always lots of little things done over accumulation of time. And he explained it really well. He said, if you're trying to lose weight and you eat a donut a day, if you don't have a donut one day, it's not going to make any difference. But if you don't have a donut every day, it's going to add up to a big difference. Ditto, if you suddenly start eating, if, you have, if you're on a diet or you're trying to keep fit or you're trying to look after yourself and you eat one donut one day, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. But if you eat one donut every day for a year, it's going to add up to a whole lot of difference. And I thought, what a brilliant way of explaining how you need to take little action steps every day and it all adds up over time. Well, as a low carber, I wish you hadn't brought up the word donut. <laughs> <laughs> because I do love a donut, me. Lovely. I love them in all shapes and sizes. Love them. Well, I think donuts are like fish and chips. They're overrated for the calories. Oh, no. Not my, not my, I love a donut. No, if you give me a brownie, I'd be, I'd be right there in a second. Yes, and last night I watched Nigella making brownies very quickly. That's and torture. Uh, oh, mm. <laughs> Okay, project updates then. Well, nothing much to report on the book, but we've got some podcast news, haven't we? Do you know, my brain's gone completely blank. <laughs> well, last week, last week you put us in two new categories and we ended up in the top 40 and the top 50 in them. Yes, we did, didn't we? And do you know what? It hasn't made a blind bit of difference to our download numbers. <laughs> no, well, I don't, you're, doing, you're doing a client. Why would it within a week? Yeah, I know, I know. Why would it I'm within a week? So it just goes to show, doesn't it, the vanity of those charts? I know. It's so so depressing. We've, I feel like we've done massive action. No, 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 it's not depressing. Darling, you can't call massive action something that we're seven days into. No, it's true. It's true. So it compa- check back with me in 365 days' time. Surely this right. is the point that what's-his-name's just made about a donut. We've got to keep going with those new initiatives every week and encouraging our listeners on Fridays to share it and help us double the audience. And, and now that we're going for downloads, that's all we care about. But we did both get quite excited that we were... That, that we might find new listeners in new categories. Although, yeah. as I like to say, I've never been onto iTunes and searched on a podcast and found one but that doesn't mean other people don't no absolutely and also it means that you're in um being suggested next to other podcasts that's the important thing about that it's not well so you say but if it hasn't made any difference but anyway well fingers crossed let's see what happens (laughs) now um were you going to tell us something else then no, I've got no project updates about my book. I've still got four places left on my workshop to go. Um, so that's a, a project I'm concentrating on trying to fill those places so I can stop banging on about it. Um, yeah, well, you see, what you're doing is you're filling places for Pete instead of for yourself. You need to get, back to, get back to your own. Oh, there's plenty of time. When you think 50% of people book in the last two weeks, oh, you know, I've only got four places left. So it's, I'm going to fill that between now and Christmas. Easy, aren't I? It's going to happen. Well, uh, and, and we've been known to fill one at eight thirty in the morning before the workshop starts at nine o'clock, if you remember. Yeah, so you were there to take the money. <laughs> I was. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hadn't been there to take the money, we would, we would, they couldn't have got in. No, no, no. They were no. The people could buy on PayPal and walk round. That's what yeah. used to happen. Yeah, that's right. So what? So your book's still so waiting for your man, is it? Still waiting for the forward. Yes, and I'm not going to pester him. No, of course. No, He's course. ever so slightly overdue, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to pester him. I'll leave it to his own sweet time, and I'm trusting that that's the right thing to do. There's a lot of people waiting. Me totally amongst them. I want to read it too. Well, I think you're going to like this one, actually. Um, there's a new series on BBC Two of Rick Stein's travel shows, uh, you know, travelogues oh, with, with cooking in. Yeah. Um, and, and I've been to Padstow, where he has all his restaurants, which they call Padstein. 
And he is, of course, a chef, but I actually think he's better at making TV shows than he is at, at cooking because they're also travelogues. So you get food and travel combined, which I think is, well, I think is what he does best. Anyway, the new series is called Rick Stein's Road to Mexico, and it starts out in San Francisco, which is a city I love. And um, then he moved on to L.A. and uh, it will flirt with bits of Baja, which I also love, before going on to Mexico proper, where I've never been. Um, the stuff in San Francisco was all about Chinese food and Chinatown. And then the further south he goes, the more Mexican it gets, obviously, because of the you know people that come over the border into California at the bottom there. Um, terrific fun. Loving it. Lovely, lovely to see him back. And not the first time I've mentioned his travelogues with food on, the, on our podcast, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am totally and utterly impressed with Harry Styles this week from One Direction. He has released, he, well, first of all, let me say in, in context, X Factor this year, best ever year ever that I can remember for talent. Then we're down to, I think we're, we're on week four of the live shows and I'm getting to the point now where I don't want any of them to go. Whereas normally I really like one person and think they're going to win and, and, you know. But so the talent is incredible. And then last week, Harry Styles came from One Direction. He's got a solo album out. He looked amazing. He sounded amazing. He had a pantsuit on that was pure Mick Jagger. And he just, the song was just riveting. It really was. And then I think I popped up and you said to me, um, go and watch that BBC show on him where they went through the whole album with that really nice DJ. Nick, what's that DJ's name? Nick Grimshaw, is it? It's, gr- it's Grimmy, isn't it? Grimmy. Yeah, Nick Grimshaw. Yeah. yeah. And I really enjoyed that BBC programme. So I've actually bought the album. So yeah, that, I've been very impressed with him. It's- I was going to say, do you know what I like best about this story? Go on. It's so not your genre. I know. I know. But I am partial to a bit of rock and roll. <laughs> it's done well. <laughs> you know, I, I did like Iggy Pop and I did like the Rolling Stones and I did like, um, who else did he remind me of? Bowie. Talking Heads, Talking Heads, Bowie. Yeah. See, I loved all that. And and I think that he's really, really done a great job. And he's he's done a Steely Dan cover. I love Steely Dan. Just for a young man, he's he, I, he did say in that BBC programme, his mum and dad grew up listening to fantastic music. So he has been indoctrinated in, in good musical taste. But I've, I've been seriously impressed with him. So I've thoroughly enjoyed that. After after you mentioned him on the X Factor, because I'm not watching this year's series, and after Janet Swift asked you about the pantsuit, I thought, well, I'll have to go and look at this on YouTube. So I went and had a look at on YouTube, and I thought the performance was most enjoyable, Nicola. Oh well, there you go. Got all the, got all the ladies of a certain age going, didn't they? <laughs> 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 oh fantastic well that's it for another week thank you very much judith and i will okay see you soon. Uh, yeah let's, let's talk after this about other things yeah okay okay bye bye you've been listening to nicola cairncross and judith morgan the podcast is called own it your business and your life do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 